a no offense society is a no knowledge society. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, this is quite interesting to me. Okay. Tell every you're going to tell everybody else why you strongly agreed. Well, the thing is that I, a word with a society without hurt is a society that's ignorant and a society that is ignorant is susceptible to propaganda and it's basically 1984. I actually read the book, so I know what I'm talking about here. Okay, so tell us why you stood on the slightly agree line. Uh, yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, there's always going to be some offense in society given the pursuit of knowledge. I only put slightly agree, though, because I worry that the ex extrapolation from the statement is going to be that, you know, we should necessarily try to avoid, you know, not offending people, which I don't think is true. I think there are some offenses that contribute to a lack of knowledge as well, you know, like... Uh, what do you mean, yeah? So like uh, Nazism, like the Jewish question, those are offensive statements that are based entirely on lies and contribute to a lack of knowledge. Like the protocols of the elders of Zion and such. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I understand your claim. So you're, the, the reason that you're not one line over is what? Uh, it's because, you know, I, I, I think it's just a, a matter of uh, the question almost because like, like I said, I feel like the extrapolation might be that we should not not offend people, always. What did you think about what he said? Yeah, I kind of was giving myself leeway on like strongly agree or slightly agree because it, I wonder how someone who disagrees with me on other issues might interpret the question um, and other ways you can interpret it, yeah. Um, but is, I, is what he said sufficient to convince you to move one line to the right? I don't know that that has anything to do with it because I, I do think the way I interpret it, yeah. like I do think offense is something that happens and you're like you said, you're going to offend someone if you say something they disagree with, likely if there's someone who is driven by emotion, but also offense is something that you accept. Like you can hear something that might be hurtful or offensive, but if you are okay with letting it roll off your back and going on about your day, like everyone has different levels to which they're able to let something roll off their back if it wasn't like, you know, really that bad of a big of a deal. Do you agree with her? Um, I kind of, I, I don't know. I would say I agree with everybody, but uh, the reason why I yeah. stood on the slightly agree line is just because of the way that the, the question was phrased. Um, I, the statement. This, well, the statement was phrased. Um, I would have stood on strongly agree if you had phrased it differently, like a, a no debate society is a no knowledge society. I think that our current society uh, puts too much power on the word offense and how, how that affects people. I mean, you could be offended by a rock. Well, should we debate? <clears throat> like, a no, offense is, no offense is more like I can offend anybody with my words, but no debate society is like sharing ideas and talking about everybody's different viewpoints and actually gaining knowledge from other people's perspectives versus like a no offense. Like, I don't need to offend somebody to prove my point. I could just talk to them. And I think that our society today has become so infatuated with offense offending driven people, yeah. offending people and how they are offended by other people that they can't even take a second to like step back and like try to understand why the person like, why are they offended? That's a that's more important than the fact that they're offended. Why are they offended? So. I'm processing that. Did, did what she say convince you to, to move one one line to the agree? I would say so. Oh, then go ahead, move. Okay, we have, all right. So, now I'm gonna ask you, look to your left and then look to your right. Pick one and you tell me what it would take for you to move that one line, uh, e either, either side. Yeah, uh, to move to agree, I would have to say that there would have to be some correlation between or some causation between offense given and knowledge gained because that's not necessarily always the case like I was trying to point out earlier. So like if there was more of a correlative factor, which there is in certain circumstances, I can definitely agree to that, then I could certainly move over to the agree line. I think it just depends on which case you're talking about. Okay, uh, well, I know I told you to pick one, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, 
bushwhack you with another question. What would it take you to move to your right? Or to, yeah, to your right. Yeah, so to move towards neutral, I'd have to say that, um, you know, I, it would probably have to be demonstrated to me that there is never any correlation between a no offense society and a no knowledge society, because if that were the case, you know, I mean, that would be would impossible to, be to show neutral on the issue. Right. Yeah, that I, I think that would be impossible to show. OK, what would it take you to move to neutral? Uh, complete rewording of the phrase or the question or statement. Sorry. Completely rewording the statement. No offense, uh, rewording to a no debate society is a no knowledge society. No, I would say. Oh, a complete like, rewording. Neutral. I I think that anything stating that people talking to each other is is gain gaining knowledge. I would stay on the agree side. Anything doing with communication and and debate is gaining knowledge, no matter what it is. If you were to say like. That's almost always true, isn't it? Yeah, Even if you debate something it, idiotic. Well. I guess, but if you're debating something idiotic, then you're still seeing another perspective. Everybody has their own opinions and views. You're still gaining knowledge that other people have different perspectives than you. So why wouldn't that be, if that's true, why wouldn't that be a reason to move to neutral? Because uh, I still agree with it. W what's the it in the sentence? I still agree with the fact that like a uh, debate is is still a, uh, like no debate is no knowledge. Like no communication is no mo knowledge. If you were to say something yeah. along the lines of like no text messaging is no knowledge, I would stand on neutral. But that's a bad example. I can't think of a good example. Yeah, because I think inherent in the whole concept of debate is someone gets something. I guess if you, debate is just if they were like debate. terrible debaters, maybe. I'm not, talking like, I'm not talking like a debate club, like you're trying to make somebody agree with you. I'm just saying like you're like talking Okay. Having a conversation. All right, cool. Move from here unless you completely reworded that. Okay. And would you move? Would you be willing? What would it take you to move either to your left or to your right again? What would it take? Well, let's go to this one. What would it take you to move to the slightly agree? I think it should be ref the the statement should be rephrased if I were to move to the right. Like most people have said, because it's a vague statement. Yeah, we just came up with it the last two, like literally five minutes ago. Yeah. It's from a book. It's from 1984 by George Orwell. The, no, the, it's from um, it's from Jonathan Rauch's Kindly Inquisitors. Hmm. I do think it's good to have civil discourse and bounce back off of each other in terms of ideas. That might be a better word than debate is civil discourse. Yes, civil discourse. So where would civil discourse go in if you were to rephrase the statement? If you were to rephrase it as a no civil discourse society, as a no knowledge society, I would stand on strongly agree. If you were to rephrase it as, really? yes. No, would you move a no civil... I would go to strongly agree, yeah. And you, where would you, which agree would you go to, agree or strongly agree? Strongly, strongly agree. Really? Would, what, would... I would go back to strongly agree. Yeah, I would also too. Really, every person... Really? So to repeat what it would take you to move to strongly? Uh, if it said a no, uh, I guess no civil discourse, because I, as I said, the term offense is uh, like I could offend him right there by saying I hate NASA. I don't. But like that's that's <laughs> offensive to him because he has a NASA sweatshirt on. Or you could say I don't like brown hair. That's slightly offensive to me. Uh -huh. But that's not like you're not gaining any knowledge from that. OK. All right. Cool. Um, so. Part of this is the process is to see if you calibrated your beliefs correctly. Uh, part of it is, but it was good because we just came up with that question. We're constantly coming up with new questions, etc. So it's learning experience for us too. Did you get anything out of this? Did you get anything out of it? Yeah, I thought it was interesting to bounce back off of each other and. And you moved, which is really good. Yeah, I think that's a. Good, I think it's interesting. You can change someone's mind, albeit even in the slightest way. Yeah. And so what do you think the consequence is? Because we've been trying to partner with non-Republican groups, non-conservative, no one will partner with us. I mean, no one will, they're totally unwilling to. What do you think the consequence is for those people? Um, well, all right, I guess it kind of depends on their perspective because not every political org is necessarily interested in communication with other political organizations. They all have their own self-interest. Now, I would say, like, from my own personal taste, like, I, you know, talk to right-wingers and so on and so forth, people who disagree with me all the time. And 
for me, I think it's just a good exercise because A, it helps you to shape your rhetoric, B, it helps you to shape your knowledge, and C, it might help you to maybe open somebody's window just a little bit, you know, like get them to see a little more sunshine, at least from where I'm sitting. So are you concerned at all, particularly because these are young people, and I know I realize I'm saying that someone who's far younger than I am, but are you concerned at all that the people who refuse to engage, to borrow a, a turn of phrase, in civil discourse are placing too much confidence in the beliefs they have because they're not testing those beliefs? Is that a concern to you? Because everything you said was other oriented and is the concern for those people, is there any concern on your part for those people who don't want to engage in that? Uh, I guess it depends on how politically active they are because it's not really everybody who's politically active. But what I will say is like, if you have a friend or something that disagrees with you, um, I'd probably say within certain boundaries, you know. No, no, the, I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I should have been more clear. For the Democratic, for the Democrats and the liberal organizations who refuse to partner, I'm talking about those people who are already involved in a political movement. So refuse to partner with you specifically? No, refuse to have right any conversation, right. civil conversation, refuse to have any conversation. I've never voted for a Republican in my life. I probably just admitted too okay. much to you right there. Okay, but for sure. So what I, what I will say about that is that I have personally seen a good deal of uh, organizations that are willing to do things like that. And uh, I think that uh, one of the things is, though, uh, you know, certain orgs have certain uh, tendencies, right? But if, like, your uh, goal is outreach, I would say it is important to go out and talk to people because at the very least you are kind of, uh, you know, boiling down your ideas and fine-tuning them to a point. If, even if you don't change your mind at all personally, I think it's probably good to help shape your rhetoric in that way to go out and talk to people. All right, everybody get something out of that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Was it fun, I hope, a little bit? Yeah, cool. Really yeah, good. I wouldn't mind saying something. Let me turn so the cameras can... Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, kind of piggybacking off of that, I think more of the question is concern about, you know, people becoming too closed-minded, more than their lack of wanting to talk to other people. I mean, you brought up the labels of conservative, Republican was what you're one side, and then liberal, liberal and... What's the other one? Uh, Democrat, Democrat left. The yeah. other side. And I think the biggest issue in our country right now is the fact that those four groups exist and the fact that we define each other off of those. Because I, I mean, I have plenty of friends. I'm not going to, you know, define myself right now in front of you, but I have plenty of friends that have opposing viewpoints with me. And we are able to have, you know, constructive conversations about it because they are willing to, like, discourse. And the issue is, is that people don't want to think that other people believe other things and they're not willing to accept that either i think that's the biggest problem and social media is a big 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 totally agree i couldn't agree more so how do we get people doing this again changing their minds like talking to each other talking across divides like how do we do how do we what's the see how it's one of the reasons i'm here how do we do human interaction uh, communication, but we, basic human but things. I, I agree like, with you, and and things that existed and years ago. I, no, not you don't have to go that yeah. far. To tell you, the 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 problem is we have a, a non-trivial number of people who simply don't want to do that. Maybe the problem is is that people believe that that there's such a huge majority of people. I mean, do you really know the whole population like that? Just because of like a few people, I think that people take such broad. You know, they meet. Two Republicans that have such strong, you know, okay, so points and they can't view any Republicans any different from that anymore because they've seen, you know, the extreme side of things. Like, why, who are you to take a small group of people and then, you know, make that extreme to a whole population? So I'll overshare. We tried. You don't have any. I'm telling you, we tried and tried and tried to get Democrats, young Democrats. Nobody will have a car. And in fact, we reached out to them first. And then they wouldn't do it, and the people who were willing to do it with us was Turning Point. So do you think that there is more of an issue right now, certainly not 10 years ago, in the society among a certain group of people who are simply unwilling to talk? So I will say that I'm one of the co-founders of the Young Democrats Club here. I don't, I'm not with them anymore because I had a few disagreements with leadership. Okay. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things is, is that, um, you know, from where I'm sitting, I would have 
probably accepted that and had that conversation, but I can't unilaterally make that decision, obviously. Uh, I did want to touch on your question about, um, you know, how do we get people to start talking? Please, please. It's very important. So uh, there's a piece called Bowling Alone by, I think, Roger Putnam. Um, I might be missing his first name here, but... Anyway, uh, he's, uh, he talks about how, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, there's been a trend towards more and more social isolation amongst people. And we have to look at the causative factors there. And I think a part of it is, you know, uh, you know, stagnating wages, stuff like that, because it costs money to go out and hang out with people sometimes, you know, especially if you want to, like, go out and do something. And I think that's a part of it. Uh, I think there are other, like, you know, various uh, social structures, institutions at play into why people people are starting to feel so alienated and isolated from each other. And I think by like addressing those social institutions and that isolation from other people, you get this thing where people like come into contact with other people and it helps them humanize the other in their mind. That's come, come in contact. I think this is what we're saying. I want to put words in come in contact with people who don't believe exactly like they do. Is that what you... Yeah. Uh, it, it also applies to things like, so if you uh, get a racist to talk to a lot of like black people because you know let's say they haven't before and they really sit down and like talk things out over time that person tends to become less racist like daryl davis yeah like daryl davis did with the uh, ku klux klan members all right well cool well thanks everybody i hope you found it interesting and helped you calibrate so cool cool so we're going to do lots of questions like this again we just threw out that question but we have a lot of controversial and fun questions tonight cool cool thank you